<laughs> God is good. <laughs> Even when we're bad. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Man, there's a lot of more things being exposed now. There are so many things that are coming to the surface. It's incredible. People are getting caught. Corruption is being exposed. Human trafficking is being exposed. Banks are collapsing. And they're still printing counterfeit money. <laughs> Eventually, everything is going to decrease while we increase. Amen? You know, and, and it's amazing how many people still believe that everything is going fine because they're really not seeing beyond their own false reality. You know, think about this. New York City is crumbling. They're falling. California is crumbling. People are leaving. Businesses are leaving. You know, they're trying to do this. They're trying to dismantle every state in our country. The deep state antichrist regimes. So they can take over and depopulate. Because they can't control us. Listen, one of they're still trying to remove our Second Amendment to be armed. That's why this country still is going on. That's why all these other countries, even Australia, and some, all these places that have been disarmed, even Israel has been disarmed, their people. All of these countries that are in states that are disarming their people prevent them from standing up for what's right. New York City is being dismantled. It's no longer going to be the same. Businesses are moving left and right. People are not a, even investing in businesses there. Same thing in California. Uh, other democratic states, are, uh, it's all the same. They're allowing as many illegal immigrants to come in. And listen, California just put in office an Ill illegal immigrant. Think about that. They just put it in an illegal immigrant in office. This is how corrupt things are getting. And you'd think some people would stand up against it. You know, thank God that there are people standing up against it. I mean, the truckers are now, they're saying no. For seven days, they're not bringing any trucks into California, New York, and some of the other places. You don't think that's going to raise prices? You don't think it's going to cause people to move out of there? Now these, now these states are crying to Biden for more money. Things are crazy. And now there's more illegal immigrants going to there, like uh, in, in uh, Mexico, and I mean in Arizona and stuff like that, and, and Texas, where they're standing up to protect their borders so they can't come in. 70% have been depleted. 70% of Im illegal immigrants have been nullified there now. Listen, I feel sorry for these people because they're trying to leave countries that are broke down, torturing them, uh, mistreating them unfairly. But you got to still come in the right way. My family came in the right way. Your family came in the right way. They earned to vote. They earned to become a citizen. They made a promise and vow to support this country and protect this country. These people have no vows whatsoever. They're protecting their own interests and starting up their own organizations that are corrupt. And they're polluting our country with all the corruption of the drugs and alcohol and child smuggling and all the other prostitution and everything else. Works of the flesh. Amen. So we're seeing that the country and the world is in still a deep darkness. But we're called to bring people out of darkness. We were brought out of darkness. Amen. 
And somebody came to you and spoke to you about Jesus. Amen? Somebody uttered the words of life and light to every one of us. <clears throat> and we got rescued. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Now, it didn't say that you would feel it, did it? For behold, the dark, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. You shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Darkness has covered the earth since Satan took over the earth. He's known as the God of this age. Amen? And that's what God is doing right now. That's why he's got a sting operation. You, you first, you can't come out of darkness unless you expose it first. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 1, please. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Don't give up. Look at no matter what you're going through, no matter how many mistakes, no matter how many sins you've done, don't give up. Amen? Don't give up. No money, uh, how many times you've messed up with your mouth, your thoughts, your attitude or motives. Did you repent? Then you're washed clean. But our brain doesn't want to accept that. The old man is always going to torture you from those things that you've done. He's going to tell you you're not forgiven and, and, and you don't deserve, you're not worthy of this and this and whatever. Forget it. God doesn't see that. He's not looking at that. He's looking at the new you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 2. So don't lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, right? That's renounce or repent. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel, which is the message of truth, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who are what? Under deep darkness. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is God, for it is the God of, who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the Lord, glory of God in the face of Jesus. So the God of this world who is Satan, their minds have been blinded. He blinds people. Deception is blinding. Deception keeps people in darkness. Deception keeps people in a false reality. Amen? He is the God of this age, the thoughts of this age. But God is saying, I'm bringing light out of darkness. Amen. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age. Who is the God of this age? Satan. According to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. I marvel that you were, 
you, you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, a different message. Remember, there's a lot of false messages out there, isn't there? Gospel is a representation of a message. We call the gospel of light the message of truth. But there's a gospel of darkness called the message of deception. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Whoa. Hmm. Think about that. So those that promote same-sex marriage, uh, transgender, all of these things is not the gospel of Christ. Because the gospel of Christ brings freedom in the character of Christ. That's the purpose of it. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. For, uh, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please man? For I, if I seek to please man, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. In other words, he's bold. Amen? The gospel of light and life, it's an eternal message from another reality. So Paul is saying, listen, we need to have doors of utterance opened. Out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. That living water is light coming out of your mouth. As you've heard me say before, never forget where you came from. That will keep you in a great attitude of <laughs> gratefulness. You know, the, the only time we really sin is when we go back. Amen? And we touch and agree with something that's occurred in our life or whatever, or there's still things. And You know, one of the things that we, we need to do all the time is when you're in a place of react or you want to react, you must look at those places because if you follow it, it's always something from childhood or brought up why you're reacting according to what's happened years ago. Many people are still reacting because they were rejected. Amen? So all of these things, if you take the moment and slow everything down, you'll see where it came from. And you'll find out almost 99% it's something when you were a child and innocent. See, you may remember some of the things that have been in the last 10 or 15 years, but it's before that. This has always happened. You, there's that place where you are in a child of innocence that something has occurred to you. And you've accepted it. That's what brings strongholds, right? What's a stronghold? A memory lie. So you're still reacting to something that has happened to you when you were a child of innocence. But you're not realizing it just repeats itself as you grow and become an adult and so forth. Does everybody understand that? So there's times when you're going to need to just stop and ask the Holy Spirit, show me. Bring me to that place that has occurred in my life that causes me still to react and not respond. Amen? And you'll find a much more peaceful life. You'll find a much more joyful life. You won't have to fake it to make it. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Where was I now? 1 Corinthians 1, 4. Let's speak it. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. That you were enriched in everything by him in all what? Utterance in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. See, so that utterance was given a testimony. Amen. You were given a testimony for utterance. What are you doing? You're speaking light. 
so that you come short of no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hmm. Given all utterance and knowledge. Voices, we are voices of light and life. That's why you were taken out of darkness. Romans 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those Things which are not or do not exist as though they do. See, when you bring, because we have taken out of darkness, so what we're doing is we're calling those things out of darkness into light. Amen? Who, contrary to hope, in hope, believes so that he may become the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. He was not weak in faith. Abraham was strong in faith. He became a friend of God. Amen? So, in this, we are called, we call those things that are not as though they are. In other words, we're calling them out of darkness into light. Is the world in deep darkness? Amen. People are still being called out of light, but you can't call them out of light unless it's Darkness has been, I mean, call them out of darkness unless what? Light's been exposed. Darkness has got to be exposed so we can call them out. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I what? Spoke, I uttered. We also believe in, therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Yes. Therefore, we do not what? Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't quit no matter what's happened. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, that while we do not look at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. <laughs> I believe and spoke. We need to have the utterance, the boldness to utter the light of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Now, you know, you got to have discernment and when to speak. Amen. You just can't go around telling everybody, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. They're going to slap you. We must be led by the Spirit of God. Not by emotion. Not by need. But by the Spirit. We know everybody needs Jesus, but sometimes when people, if, when you witness out of time, you push a person away. You know, especially when you first get saved, you want to tell everybody about Jesus, right? Psalm 107, verse 10. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they did what? They rebelled against the, the words of God. So why is the world in bondage and darkness? Because they rebelled against the word. Didn't it start with Adam and Eve? Did they, rebu did they re become rebellious of what God told them to do? Amen. So from that point on, the world's become in darkness. Why? Because the ruler of darkness rules the earth. 
because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses, because he's a good God. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. It's called self-infliction. Their soul abhorred all manner of food. They drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses again. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, which is what? Praise. And declare his works with rejoicing. Oh, that man would give glory to God. Many still sit in darkness, but the prayers of the light. See, our prayers are light. People you're praying for, light is penetrating darkness. Exposing the darkness in a person's life, allowing God to pull them out of darkness. See, somebody prayed for me and you. We were hidden in darkness, serving darkness, children of wrath. But somebody was praying for us. And somehow, some way, somebody carried that message, carried that prayer, carried that light to us, and we grabbed hold of it. And we came out of darkness. Amen? Acts 26, verse 12. While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in Hebrew, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So I said, who are you, Lord? <laughs> he recognized him, recognized him as someone or some thing he didn't even understand it it was a force of God's presence and glory that was more powerful than he had ever imagined so he called him Lord I am Jesus whom you are persecuting but rise and stand on your feet so what happened he saw a, what? a light the light of a message so the light was a message wasn't it Jesus speaking to him personally but arise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. In other words, you and I were called out of darkness for this purpose. To what? To make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. Do you understand this? This is for us. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus in me he said turn them from Satan's darkness of deception to the light of truth and life well, how are you going to do that you're going to need to be able to Utter, speak boldly. You know, I've seen people arguing this, that, and whatever, and you, know, you may say, man, you need Jesus. I have Jesus. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you had Jesus. <laughs> you don't have him right now. <laughs> Again, these are, remember, 
The closest thing to outer darkness is outer court. That's why we don't want to live in the outer court. That's a place of salvation. We're to move out of outer court and move to the east side, you know. We're moving on up. You go in, why? You're to be living in the holy place and then the most holy place. But too many people go from the holy place and now they're living in outer darkness or outer, outer courts and they're always in and out. They're uncertain. They're unstable. They have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power of God, trusting in them and everything that they're doing because they're not living in the holy place or the most holy place. Hallelujah. Ephesians uh, 5, verse 8, please. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. So if you don't expose the darkness, they stay in darkness. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Ooh, do you hear that? But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. So you must utter light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as it are fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are what? They are evil. For we were once darkness, but now we are light. So we want to stay out of darkness. It doesn't mean, look at there. Everybody's going to make a mistake. Amen? You're going to step in affliction, a puddle of affliction, which is self-imposed. You're going to regret some things that you did. But you repent. You let the blood go before you. You let the blood be manifested. And it restores the spirit. Amen? Because we grieve the spirit every day somehow. Just by touching or agree with something, you can grieve the spirit. But that's why you repent. We live a life of repentance. Amen? Hallelujah. My wife makes me repent all the time. <laughs> you need to repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is a message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is lighted in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie <laughs> and do not practice the truth. So there's an area where you must practice the truth and keep light going. Practicing the truth is keeping the light on. If you're not practicing the truth, you're shutting the light off. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar in his word is not in this. His words of light are not in this. So we're, we're, we're not to walk in darkness, right? We're not, to pra we're not to practice darkness. But if you practice the truth, which is light, it's the light of truth. It maintains. It keeps the lights on. It's like paying your bill. If you don't practice, you're not paying your bill. Amen? And the lights get turned off. And all hell breaks out. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 
But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you might proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now a people of God, who had no, have not attained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Oh, glory. We are chosen. We are called out of darkness to expose darkness. But you've got to ask yourself, am I exposing darkness? First of all, you better expose the darkness in your own life. Don't worry about exposing somebody else's darkness. Well, there's people who want to expose everybody else's darkness and hide their own. And I'm going to close at Ephesians 6 and verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Strangers, voices. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And as for me, that utterance may be given to me. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, which we are ambassadors in chains, and that, in, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We're to speak boldly, calling those things that are not as though they are. We're to utterance the light. It doesn't mean that, you know, boldly doesn't mean you, 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 you. There's an area where you're bold with light, but then gentle. You know, how you, how you deliver something is the most important thing. If I was delivering a pizza to you, I wouldn't throw it at you. Here, catch. You hand it over, Amen. So how you deliver the light is either going to be, it may come light, it, it may turn to darkness. Amen? Your delivery is vitally important. <laughs> vitally important. Don't forget that. So you may run across people with this and that, whatever. Man, you know, you're doing this, you're going to hell. You don't have to tell them they're going to hell. They already know it. Amen? Not that you, sometimes you need to tell them. And you don't say, you go to hell. No, that's not what it's about. Our delivery must be in the gentleness of Christ with boldness. See, they want to eat your words because they're light and they don't even know it. Because when they do that, when the light is exposing darkness in an individual, they're able to see that. A conviction comes then. But it depends on how you deliver it. Amen? Praise God. You and I were called out of darkness into the glorious light of Christ Jesus so that we can bring others out with us. Never lose sight of that. And the, world is in, and the world is looking for an exit. The people of the world are looking for an exit. They're looking for a way out. They don't know how. They're dependent on the government. They're dependent on the media, which is putting them more in darkness. They're leaving states and cities and towns and trying to find Jesus, and they don't know it. So you're going to see floods of people come to Florida and get saved. You're going to see floods of people go to other states that are Christian states and get saved. We're going to see a great revival. And it's not only going to happen in this country, it's going to happen globally. Globally. 
There's a rebellion against darkness right now, globally. It's being exposed. And God started it. He started the sting operation. Amen? He's the one that set it all up. But we're the body. He's the head. He's the brains. Amen? <laughs> we're the laborers. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Seal it with the Holy Spirit and cover it with the blood that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.